Hey y'all, it's Pink Shirt Princess, and we're going to review Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6, Episode 4, called Black Exploitation. Now, before we get into this video, y'all already know I'm going to ask, where the fuck is Destiny? Because maybe I did not get the memo that she was no longer on the show, but I don't know, I kind of miss my girl, and a lot of people didn't like Destiny, but I liked her because she was the only one who didn't let Mel run over top of her, so somebody let me know in the comments where the fuck Destiny is. Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this review. So we're continuing off where we left off in the last episode where they're at the massage place and all of that, and Kiki and Tiffany are getting into it, and I'm starting to get a little annoyed with these whole to be continued type you know episodes because when they pick up the next episode off it is kind of dry in my opinion i mean you know kiki and tiffany were just talking about how you know tiffany wasn't there so she shouldn't speak on it and kiki's kind of like you know who are you talking to because you don't understand the kind of relationship kiki and tisha have and of course, you know, Tiffany is always talking out of turn. So I guess, you know, Kiki was just late to the party to realize that, you know, Tiffany kind of runs her mouth when, un you know, unnecessary and no one asked her to. So, yeah. So the conversation gets more heated and Tisha gets up to calm Kiki down. And then Mel in the confessional says that it's a lot going on and they don't need Tiffany getting upset because she's carrying... And Kiki's going off to the point where Tisha has to grab her face to calm her down. What I never understand is, is why no one ever tells Tiffany to just shut the fuck up and mind her business. It's like no one ever tells her in the time to shut the fuck up and just mind her business. She always sticking her nose somewhere where I don't belong. And I get it, it's a show and they need some drama. But like, Tiffany don't know how to read a fucking room. And is beyond annoying at this point so at this point um stormy kind of getting a little lit and she's telling kiki that with the whole infidelity thing that kiki mentioned at mel's party that kiki said she and tisha had had conversations multiple conversations in regards to marceau's infidelity and tisha's trying to get stormy to basically stop talking about that shit because she don't want to talk about it and stormy kind of just keeps ignoring her like yeah i hear you but she keep going keeps going on now in my opinion stormy got some anger issues and when i talked to my mom she was like yeah why do you think she got a zen room and i completely forgot <laughs> that last season she invited mel over to her house to her zen room because I think it was because of everything that happened at the Galentines. Like, mm -hmm. Stormy get a little lit for me, but she made some good points. Stormy is basically saying to the group that she told Tisha that what Kiki said was more than enough because people were already talking about the whole infidelity thing with Marceau and Kiki Loki validated all of the rumors and Tisha was like validating a lie but she just don't want to talk about this and Stormy says she gets her but she continues and I'm just like I know she's trying to get her point across and I'm glad Tisha didn't get too upset because you know everybody's just learning to have these conversations whether it gets heated or not they know how to bring it back you know what I'm saying but again Stormy just needed to chill because Tisha asked her more than once to just stop because she didn't want to hear this. So Stormy asked Kiki if she felt a way about Stormy saying something because she felt like Kiki did have a problem. Why didn't Kiki just shut Stormy down right then and there? Because if it were Stormy's cousin, she would have. And Kiki's kind of looking confused like, hmm, why didn't I, <laughs> in my opinion? Like, Kiki was too stunned to speak. I don't think she was expecting all that energy coming back at her. I think she is used to giving it, but I don't think she's used to receiving it. And Stormy says that she never told Tisha exactly verbatim what Kiki said. All she said to Tisha was that Kiki said enough. 
And Stormy kind of just kept telling Kiki that if she felt like, you know, she was saying too much, that Kiki should have just told her to shut the fuck up. And at this point, Stormy getting a little lit, like, yeah, because if you would have told me to shut the fuck up, we would have been in there fighting. Like, she wanted to fight Destiny. And, you know, I'm... I'd be trying to steer clear of this whole colorist conversation, but if it seems like a lot of the times them little light-skinned women love to make it seem like the dark-skinned girls on this show are just so aggressive and angry and they pop off the most when if you look at T- uh, Tiffany and Stormy in these scenes here, they were the ones really cussing and getting lit and getting mad, so I don't know. I'm 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 just aware, you know what I'm saying? Because no one ever points out when they getting upset and getting lit and ready to fight and shit. Cause let's not forget when we, you know, really started to get to know Stormy, she was ready to throw chairs and shit at Destiny's head. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So Miss Holier Than Thou, Mel. She's like in her confessional that when she goes for spa days, this isn't usually what happens. But, you know, these people in the group know how to mess up a massage day. And then they, you know, show a clip from the first season of Tisha Kimmy and Mel getting massages and they call Mel bougie. And Mel was just so upset about that. But then in the confessional, she's just like, she got to go. You know, she don't want to stay here. Not with all of this because she's just so much better than them. Right. You know, she doesn't yell or anything. She doesn't do none of this stuff. And she did say that she was losing her voice, you know, before she had came to the spa day. So I, I get it. You know, she wasn't trying to talk over nobody. But let's not forget how lit that she used to get in some conversations. You know, she's not always zen and calm and all that stuff either so and there's nothing wrong with having a passionate conversation as long as it don't get physical ain't nothing wrong with that and in my opinion maybe mel was just a little surprised at how passionate and lit you know stormy was getting about this conversation because yeah she seen her act like that at the galentines but that was that was stormy being mel's little guard dog you know to kind of defend Mel in front of Destiny. But Mel is acting like she wasn't acting a complete fool at the Madani re reopening <laughs> with Miss Wanda and all of that. With her little um, Mr. T chain around her neck and shit in her jumpsuit. Like, you know, they be acting like they don't act a fool ever. But, you know, just certain situations are so above them. Girl, bye. So basically, Mel is just kind of like, this This shit is too ghetto for me. So she gets up and leave and, you know, she's giving Kimmy, Tisha, and Kiki hugs, mumbling smart shit. And, you know, talking about some, no ma'am, no sir, not today, not tomorrow. Like, okay, old lady. <laughs> but then after her changing her clothes, she's, you know, she comes back into the room to say her goodbyes to everyone officially. And she says she doesn't think that this is what they desire today to be and it's a lot and that they should have moved they should move forward and not everything turn into a bunch of this mel couldn't even give a real adjective to describe what that massage day had turned into she just said a bunch of this and stormy says it's good and that she thinks it's crazy that you know they can't have conversations like this Instead, they want it to be bottled up and thrown under the rug. That was clear shade towards Mel. We'll get into that later. And I can tell Mel is trying to keep her composure because she's like, well, you know, not necessarily, you know, responding to what Stormy said. But Stormy keeps cutting Melody off. And then Stormy says, you know, they're doing a good job. And then she goes around the room asking everybody if you mad. I'm not mad. You mad? You mad? You mad? And, you know, they say no. And Tisha agrees and Stormy says, you know, you move forward by having the proper conversations. And the look, you know, the little smug smirk she gave Mel, it was like, you know, because I told you this already, lady, and you're not going to keep acting like that little bullshit conversation we had at Kimmy's party was all that it was going to be. Like, there's still tension between us. Obviously, Stormy and Mel have not 
talk talk again they're not in the same space as they were before and I understand why you know Stormy still is giving Mel somewhat of the cold shoulder because again she brought this lady into her warehouse let this lady you know do a music video at her whole house and all of this stuff and now you know just because after reunion you know they they don't talk you know Stormy's feelings is hurt but it's like girl you ain't seen the other seasons this is what Melody does Melody basically says that, you know, if this is the way that they like to communicate and discuss things, and that's fine, but she got to get out of there. So she says her goodbyes and thanks Tisha for inviting her, and then she leaves, you know, mumbling more shit. And I'm honestly genuinely surprised that she is being cordial with Tisha because, you know, them, them two, they've been buttonheads since the first season. So, I you know, I'm proud of their growth. I ain't going to give Mel too much now. I'm going to give Tisha all the props. I ain't going to give Mel too much. But basically, you know, after that, Tisha says that it's good that nobody's fighting and that they can move forward from this whole situation. And then Kiki says that this whole thing didn't resolve not one damn thing. And Tisha laughs kind of. It was like, you know, that's why we aren't in a good place now. And, you know, I thought that was kind of a weird comment. But, you know... She can't keep pushing everything under the rug or not being honest. Like, yeah, because things didn't end the way Kiki thought they should, she felt like, well, nothing got resolved. That's not always true. You just got to take the meat and leave the bones. So now we're in the next scene with Martel and his tight ass clothes. Is there not enough funding in his wardrobe for him to get clothes that fit? Because, good God, those are some mailman shorts. Martel, where the fuck you get them from, boy? But Martel invites Maurice and Marcel out for a batting practice and to catch up since they can't mooch off of Big Lou's ass right now because he out of town. Maurice is walking up to meet Martel. He says that Martel got on his hoochie daddy shorts on in the wintertime. And then Martel's phone starts to ring, and then he says, Is she by Sheree? In a real cringy way, like, oh, it's Sheree. Like, why is she calling him right now? Like, obviously he's filming and he don't want it to seem like he really do got a girlfriend. Like, sir, Sheree been in this game long enough to know that she gonna help him keep his ass on the show. Because he don't have no other storyline, unfortunately. And in my opinion, he only acted that way because he really not feeling Sheree like that. She's just, you know, some nice arm candy, but also he don't want to do nothing that's going to piss Melody off. That's just what I think in the back of his head. He, you know, don't want to do too much that he know Melody going to see. And the thing is, is even though he's not over her and she might not be completely over him, they both have to move on at some point. The only thing is, is Martel chose somebody high profile and Melody probably didn't choose anybody as high profile as she is. And Maurice is like, oh, I didn't know, you know, we were silent buttoning Sheree. I didn't know we was doing that. And Martel says that, you know, he told Sheree that he's out hanging with his boys, whatever. And then Mar- Maurice just couldn't wait. He was like, the last time I saw you, you know, you was playing escort. And they showed the clip from Kimmy's party when, you know, Martel was trying to be a gentleman. So he says, and walk Melody out to her car. Martel asks, like, what does that have to do with Sheree? And Mar- Maurice says, that exactly has to do with Sheree. Basically, like, you know, you got a whole girlfriend over here, but you still trying to cozy up to your ex-wife. And Martel says that, you know, that's the mother of his four children and he wants her to be safe and that he'll always be a gentleman. And then as soon as Maurice asks, how's that going with Sheree? Marceau runs in and says, don't start without me, his little wide back self. So basically they catch Marceau up on the conversation and Maurice says he's trying to see what's up because Martel walked Melody out and he's trying to see, you know, what kind of terms they are on. And Marcel says that Martel got to find himself and that, you know, he can date. And then Maurice says, a double-minded man 
is unstable in all his ways. <laughs> and I don't know who is the oldest Scott brother, but Maurice sounds more like his dad than anybody else does. That's, you know, that's just what I took there. And Maurice then says that Martel might be triple minded. And then Martel says he might, he might be quadruple minded. Like, sir, don't dig your hole deeper than what it already is. Just please. You can just tell Marcel can wait for Martel's ass to meet a single friend again so he can give him the single friend advice. Marceau says, you know, don't make any decisions until you're ready and then to just play the field and find himself. And Martel does not seem like the type of man who really want to be out here thought and bobbing. He wants to have a wife and he wants to have a girlfriend too. So he says, you know, he's not going to do all of that. He's just enjoying himself. And then Martel in the confessional says, you know, why is everybody, why does everybody want to discuss his dating life all the time? And I'm just thinking like, well, you've been dating the whole time you've been on this fucking show, even while you had a wife. So we want to know what's going on in the dating world of Mr. Martel Holt, because you be having a wife and a girlfriend at the same time. or You got a couple different girlfriends at one time. We want to know what's going on, you know, flavor of love. That's what I'm getting over here. So they all, you know, get a chance to toss the baseball and then try and bat or whatever. And then, of course, Martel almost kills the cameraman. And then Marcel asked what Martel has been doing, you know, business wise. And Martel says that he's going to be having a magazine unveiling party for Upscale magazine. And then Maurice asked if Martel um, is going to wear another stole or two. <laughs> And Martel's like, what? What you talking about? And then Maurice says, you know, the fox. And then they showed a flashback to the party, you know, when Martel was in all white in Atlanta or at the wine party, the INS wine launch, you know, when he had on his little white fox. Martel says he's going to leave that in Atlanta, you know, and chuckling. Ha ha ha. And then Maurice asks if Martel's going to invite Sheba Sheree. And, you know, Martel says yes. Martel says that it feels like in the last few years, his favor has been stripped from him. And it's a, it's a spiritual thing for him. And he's noticed it, but he feels like some of it is coming back. And Maurice says, you know, struggling brings out character in people sometimes. Marceau mentions how his dad had eight kids by the age of 27 and how he was just talking to his dad and telling him how, you know, he was a beast and how he really did his thing or whatever. And Martel asked in a wild, like, completely shocked way, like, you know, how come their dad didn't bail on them, you know? And both Maurice and Marceau was kind of like, right? You know, he was always around. And, you know, it said he, um, they said that it, they didn't know at the time that they were poor. Um, and then Maurice was like, you know, they didn't realize until high school. And then Marceau says that they weren't poor. They just didn't have money. And as much bullshit as I feel like Marceau spews out, it seems like sometimes he, he sees his cup half full, you know, and maybe it's just because his dad was a better, you know, father figure than I would have assumed him to be because the way Maurice and Marceau be talking to their wives and treating their wives, I'm just like, who is the pappy who raised these men? But, you know, sometimes he be he be spilling some gems sometimes. I ain't gonna give him too much now. Nah. In the confessional, Marceau says it's taken a while but it seems like Martel has come around since his divorce and that, you know, he is working to be a better man, father, and possibly even husband again. And then Martel says that, you know, he has a big family or whatever. And Maurice says Martel always wanted a lot of kids. And then Martel says that, you know, he wants more. Pump your motherfucking brakes, nigga. Knox ain't even two yet, my guy. Or is he? Chill the fuck out. Just please. Marceau asks if Martel and Sheree have talked about kids or anything like that. 
and Martel says that Sheree said she would be down to have some more. And then Maurice says, you know, well, it sounds like Martel is saying kids, like he wants multiple. And Martel says it could be one or it could be more. And then they ask Martel if Sheree is the one. And then, you know, Martel's kind of little like, man, I don't know that, you know, I don't know, don't ask me that. And then, you know, it's an awkward silence, and then they end the scene. You talking about you want more kids, boy? You better know she the one. And that is the problem that I have with some men. Y'all be slinging that thing around, and you don't even know if you like the woman that you doing it with. He don't like this girl. He just using her for some clout right now, and I'll say that. Don't, you know, don't do that. These are these are actual children, you know, that y'all creating lives who have to grow up and deal with their parents. Look at what he already did to, you know, him and Melody's kids. Look at what he didn't did to Knox. He don't need to bring no more children into this world. Please and thank you, sir. You know, put that shit away. Now we get into my least favorite scene of this episode because how many seasons are we going to get of somebody sitting Marceau's simple ass down to tell him that the way he's treating his wife ain't shit and that he should be embarrassed and that they feel for for his wife because of the shit that she got to put up with. MJ had to get in his ass last episode, his own son, and now his business partner. This man should be embarrassed. Like, I really feel for Tisha because this simple-minded man, I I don't know how she do it. I'm not even going to use my notes for this one because it's all the same shit. Basically, Marceau thinks that Gino is a great asset or whatever, but Gino is trying to flip it on Marceau to let Marceau know that, no, Tisha is the asset. And, you know, Marceau basically saying that, you know, they have a great partnership so far right now or whatever and Gino's like yeah we're dating because you know I, I don't know if we married yet because I don't think I want to marry you if after I see how you treat Tisha and Marcel kind of put his head down but then he ignored that shit because he he knows he knows that he could do better and I just don't know why it takes being on this show for somebody to really get their foot up his ass so he understands like he had to bring in somebody to take over his wife's desk for him to realize Tisha is the biggest asset he could ever have. Marcel tries to clean it up some and says, well, you know, he and Tisha only dated for a month before he said to himself that he thinks he want to marry her. And then Marcel gets into a whole, you know, he feels like Gino would be a great asset because he comes from, you know, big business and he knows how they run. And Gino's like, you know, yeah, you're right, but they have to operate like big business, i.e. allowing Tisha to be involved in everything. And Gino wants Tisha to know she's involved because I'm pretty sure he felt that tension like, damn, you know. Who's this big nigga sitting in my chair? You know, I'm the president. Fuck, like, I'm the CEO. Like, who is this sitting in my chair? I know Gino felt that shit. And it seems like the only way Marceau ever learns is through some analogies, right? So Gino said that his grandfather always told him that he not raising sheep, he's raising wolves. And basically, you know, if marceau is trying to shield tisha from all the bad stuff how is he supposed to know that she can handle it when the time comes you know he basically thinking that she's weak and that she don't know how to handle it and then he finally realizes that he has to treat tisha like a partner and not like you know just somebody who is some dead weight because that's how he acts that like she is dead weight and why does it take another man for him to understand this and not listen to his own fucking wife when she's been saying this for how long you know i just it, it just baffles me how a man won't listen to a woman but he'll listen to another man all right and it's the last thing i'm gonna say about this scene marceau if you didn't learn a damn thing from your buddy martel you better treat your wife like the asset, like the partner, like the gym she is, or she going to leave your ass 
with nothing. You want to get your favorite stripped and walk around wearing mailman clothes all day like your buddy Martel? You better act like you got some damn sense because she is the sole owner of that company and she will kick your ass the fuck out. Keep playing with Tisha. Tisha is not the one. I'm trying to tell you, Marceau. You better tread lightly, shorty. And Gino, you getting a fucking raise. So we start off the next scene with Kimmy and Tisha. Um, Tisha shows up to Scott Emporium because Kimmy wants Tisha to see this new space that they have, you know, that Tisha could possibly use until she gets her office set up. And apparently it was Maurice's old podcast room, but it ain't being used right now. And Tisha says, hopefully Maurice will be cool with it. And then Kimmy says, you know, Maurice is a Tisha fan. And then Tisha says, it's a Libra thing. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. Kimmy's face looked a little like, you damn right, because you Libra's getting on my fucking nerves. I love it. And then Kimmy mentions when Tisha, you know, invited her out to coffee. And then she, you know, invited her and Mel to the massage thing. And then how Mel accepted and how it was cool. And even though things got heated at the massage place between Kiki, Stormy, and Tiffany, that she felt like, you know, they're moving in the right direction and that everything was nice. Tisha says that she had to get in between um, Kiki and Tiffany because she knows Kiki and she don't care that Tiffany is pregnant. And Kimmy says that Tiffany didn't seem to care either. And then they show a flashback to the massage and how things got heated. And like I said, you know, knock if you buck. You know, Tiffany had a lot to say. She couldn't be mad if that energy came back to her. Fuck, because if they would have been tussling in there, you know, if it really would have got heated, everybody would have been looking at Kiki like she crazy because, you know, she fighting a pregnant lady. But what, nobody looked at Tiffany crazy because she the pregnant lady who started the shit. Tisha says that overall... The massage day ended well, even though it got heated some, and Kimmy agrees. And then she says she wonders if, you know, it's time to move forward. And then a knock comes to the door. And my first thought was, did Kimmy let Tisha know that Melody was going to be showing up? Um, Because it didn't seem like it at first, not from Tisha's face. But then when Kimmy lets Melody in, you know, Melody says that, in her confessional that, you know, Kimmy wanted to do a little sit down or whatever. And she was okay with it because, you know, Tisha was there too. But she was okay with, you know, coming to sit down. Tisha and Mel greet each other nicely. And I am still in genuine shock as to how positive things are going between the two of them. I think after that puppet moment, <laughs> the reunion... That might have set Melody straight for a little bit, even if it don't last. It might have set her straight for a little bit because in her confessional, Melody says that, you know, she's hopeful that things will be okay and that they can continue to move forward, even though four months ago she had a dark soul and all of that. And, you know, she don't know how long it takes to get over a dark soul trying to be all shady and shit. But, yeah. Kimmy kind of does this big spiel and was just like, you know, the last few times that they've gotten together, it's been cool. And, you know, they're the core of the group, you know, and she wonders if they are in a better place. And, you know, Tisha drink, sips her water and Melody eats her little crackers and shit and don't nobody really answer. And then Mel was like, you know, nice spiel, nice spiel or whatever. And then there's awkward silence. And Kimmy's just kind of like, you know, yes or no. Like, what's going on? So can I get an answer, Judge? Melody says that she feels like that there is a desire to move forward that everyone has shown. But in the past that there was a respect thing missing. And Tisha agrees, and she's like, you know, pe everyone has a different way of communicating, and some people think that it's okay, and, you know, they'll just stick with it. And then Melody says that, you know, she wants to do a tea party with all the ladies to um, talk about etiquette and practice communication and things like that. Now, if you've seen the promo for that tea party, you already know Melody's going to get her ass handed to her by Stormy's mama, and I cannot wait. Now, I ain't mean to spoil it or whatever, but it's about damn time. You know what I'm saying? Somebody every season is always giving it to Mel, and I just wonder how Mel is going to take it 
when it's Stormy's mom's turn. Because everybody wanted to kick off Mom Wanda and all of this and that. And I ain't seen Miss Van in a minute, Melody's mom. But I want to see how Mel handles the situation with Stormy's mother. So Melody basically asks, like, you know, do they think this is a good idea? You know, how would the other ladies take it? And Tisha says that, you know, she thinks that they got a lot out at the massage place. And Melody was like, mm, okay. Basically, like, really? Because <laughs> that's not what she saw before she left. But Tisha says that she thinks it would be a good idea, you know. Tisha then mentions how she wants um, Mel and Kimmy and everybody to come to her Black Business Expo, you know, PowerPoint meeting or whatever. And then in confessional... Um, Tisha says that she's glad Kimmy brought them together. And then Tisha and Mel, you know, they do a weird hug as everybody's saying their goodbyes, you know, as they're ending the scene or whatever. But they're being cordial for once. Nobody's throwing jabs. Nobody's being shady. And it's nice because even though they're not besties, they're still just being grown-ups about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to like everybody, but just... Just be a grown-up about it, that's all. Tiffany. So we get into the scene with Marcel and Tisha. And Marcel's bringing Tisha coffee. And Tisha wants to show him her Black Business Expo PowerPoint that she wants to show later to everyone else. And they talk about more stuff. And Marcel somewhat segues into his conversation he had with Gina. And Tisha asks Marcel if he feels like teams are important to him. And then she mentions husband and wife. Marceau says, yes, he believes, you know, partners are important, including husband and wives. And then he mentions that some things that um, Gino said to him kind of hit home. And that, you know, as he's tried to shield Tisha from the bad things and the aspect of the business, you know, he has shown that that doesn't necessarily make her stronger. It kind of makes her weaker because he doesn't think that she can handle certain things you know and then she's just like you know you had this conversation with Gino like Gino Gino for real for real hmm. Marceau says that if he's looking at himself as a protector he can't look for Tisha to be strong in the moments where he can't be I guess and then he says he's not trying to hold her back and then he says he realizes that he hasn't been a good teammate or partner and Tisha is just like, you know, I'm so happy right now. You know, that's growth. And Marcel's like, you know, why are you saying it like that? And Tisha's like, you know, because she's been saying this for the longest. And, you know, she's just been thinking, like, you know, don't give up, don't give up. Because at some point, you know, it does turn around. And I understand in that moment that she wasn't going to cry on camera. But that meant a lot to her because it's like he finally getting it. And unfortunately it had to take another man for him to you know act like he got some sense but Marceau says that he's trying to be better and then <laughs> Tisha smart ass said Gino is the new Dr. Francis I laughed hard as shit because <laughs> she know Marceau don't like Dr. Francis but I love me some Uncle Francis what you talking about he set their asses straight now we get into the tight ass mess that is the next scene Kimmy and Maurice show up first, and then Martel is next. And in the confessional, Kimmy says that, you know, they brought back the original six from the comeback group. So what can possibly go wrong? And Maurice says that, well, um, Tisha and Marceau are late. So, and Kimmy's like, well, if that's the only thing that goes wrong, then it's a success. And, you know, Martel later says that, He's glad that Tisha put this together. And then Kimmy says that, you know, she's happy that everyone said yes to attend. And Martel says, everyone? And Kimmy says, yes. Then Martel gets up and start moving chairs over. And that was smart. You know, Martel, he ain't been smart a lot in this episode, but that right there, that was smart. Well, Mel walks in all dressed up and stuff, and Martel kind of making faces and shit. And then his in his confessional, he says that, you know, he and Mel are going through it right now with the courts and stuff, but he'll keep it professional for Tisha and Marcel. But you can just tell that Martel is visibly upset. Now, I will give him 
his kudos for trying to keep his composure because you know at them other comeback meetings especially when they was getting their divorce and stuff where they were already divorced martell acted like a plum fool so i appreciate this and um tisha and marceau walk in and everybody got a hug but marceau gave mel a handshake hmm. now i ain't trying to start no stuff but i only felt like he did that because of how like flirtatious he used to be with mel for real for real so he knew better because his ass has been in the hot seat for the past two seasons so you know i thought that was weird but hey whatever tisha and marceau are in the confessional and tisha says that she's glad that everyone came and marceau says that you know it may resemble the comeback group but they need to remember that it is not a comeback group and then you know they go back to the scene and mel is getting refreshments and one thing mel gonna do she gonna eat some fucking food now you know what i'm saying she want to make herself comfortable and i i admire that i do but she's getting her refreshments tisha's over there with her and she asks mel where she going after this it looks like she going on a date and mel says it's just called happy <laughs> it's just called happy <laughs> girl get the fuck out of here in the confessional tisha says that on social media and word on the street is that mel got herself a new boo and then also in the confessional marcel says that that's probably why that there's a lot of tension in the room right now um but tisha and marceau begin to read the powerpoint and marceau tells them that you know it's not the comeback group but then they show old um clips from the comeback group because marceau is basically like you know we've had a habit of not getting a lot done and just doing a lot of yelling and stuff so let's just keep in mind that this is not going to be that that's basically what he was saying so you know tisha and marceau they read through the powerpoint and they explain that basically they want to do like a black business job fair in a sense like you know they all bring their little businesses together and they share you know their tips and stuff and their journeys and all of that and when they end a powerpoint it's very awkward you know what i'm saying and then martel claps just to get the attention out the way and then um melody kind of you know does a little light clap but, but maurice and kimmy look baffled like what the hell did we just see and then but then martel's like you know that deserves a toast and then tisha's like you know they can get a toast once everyone agrees lord have mercy in the confessional tisha says that it seems like that you know they got everyone's attention um but marceau says you know their group has a habit of kind of pulling the rug from under everyone so you know they're gonna see tisha asks, how does everyone like the name you know black business expo and kimmy says that she's confused as to what the objective is like is it tisha and marceau's event and are they just showing up and tisha says that the vision came to her and she just wanted to present it to them and in the confessional kimmy is like really over it she's like all she hears is tisha and marceau repurposing the comeback group and trying to resell it to them to the original six of the comeback group and that the idea is an original or new he's asking like is it a group event like is it just their event and that they just want people to show up and tisha says that she loved for it to be a group event she just wanted to kick start it you know to execute because they do a lot of talking they used to do a lot of talking but they would never you know get anything started melody says it's a cool idea and that she likes to name and stuff but what is the budget for speakers and panels and tisha's like well what you mean and mel is like the fee and tisha says she wanted to be a free event but if they think that they should be paid then they should talk about it because tisha wasn't going to charge people to come to the event but if they want to get paid then now you know she would have to charge people to come to the event and then marcel martel's sneaky little messy ass whispers to marcel and says 
ask her what her fee is. And Mel catches that shit. She says, don't do that. Don't ask me what my fee is. That's none of your business. And then Mel says, you know, her management team handles all of that kind of stuff. And then Kimmy asks, like, you know, what was their marketing like? Like, would they use social media? Would they hand out business cards, flyers and stuff? What kind of stuff? And Marceau says that, you know, they would do it on their respective platforms and then would ask, you know, the rest of the group to do the same. And then Mel says, how much you pay per post? And Tisha says, she doesn't pay per post. And then Tisha says that Mel might not be in it because Mel is too expensive. In the confessional, Melody says that, you know, she believes that Tisha and Marceau have good intentions, but just because they're cool, again, she's not doing any favors or she's not working for free. And then Melody mentions, you know, sponsorships to Tisha and Marceau is trying to open a bottle of, you know, their wine. And Kimmy asks that before Mel mentioned the sponsorships, how would the money go? Like, what was going on with that? Marceau says that they weren't going to charge or pay, but that Black, their business, would be the title sponsor and cover the bulk of everything. And Tisha says that this is why she had the meeting, because they were bringing up things, you know, that they hadn't thought about. And Marceau went to Toast and says, you know, congrats. And Kimmy is, and Maurice are looking confused. And Kimmy in the confessional says, like, you know, what are they toasting to? Not everyone has agreed to participate. Are they toasting to the idea? Like, she needs more clarity. Kimmy just wants to know whose damn event is this. And I don't know. I, I know she needed clarity, but when she kept asking that, it started to get on my nerves. Like, girl, obviously they don't know just yet, so just chill the fuck out for now. But Marceau says that it is he and Tisha's event, and they are asking the rest of them to participate as of right now in whatever way that, you know, they want to participate in. And in the confessional, Mel is ready to get this toast over with so she can get out of here. She's like, you know, if Kimmy don't hurry up and do this toast, she's going to grab Kimmy's glass and she's going to clink it herself. And then in the confessional, Tisha says that, you know, she feels like the meeting didn't go as planned um, because she doesn't know if Tisha, if uh, Mel or Kimmy want to actually do it. But Marceau says that considering it's the original six, that this meeting went surprisingly well. And I have to agree. Wasn't no chairs thrown. Didn't nobody get up and walk away. Wasn't no shade thrown. It was, I mean, it was some shade thrown, but not enough that anybody wanted to get up and leave. Like, you know, I feel like they're all a little bit more mature now and they know how to handle each other. But that was basically the end of the episode. So you guys tell me, you know, what you thought of it. And make sure y'all like, share, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for, you know, the subscribers that I have right now. I really appreciate y'all, you know, y'all making me want to do videos because I can see that people are actually watching. So I just appreciate it. And, you know, y'all have a good day.